I know some people actually um, are joining uh, in, in YouTube and also in the recording as well. Perfect. Everybody is here and we are back uh, with uh, one of our uh, moderators that has already presented um, tourism uh, villages in Indonesia to um, enlighten us again with uh, more information about the industry and the communities uh, who are conducting and running tourism industry in Indonesia. Today we are with you again with the uh, volume 46 of Scott. Um, today's moderator is Hera. Uh, we had already um, learned from Hera and her team uh, before and she doesn't need an uh, uh, introduction. Everybody knows her in Scott family and those who are um, new to Scott, I would like to welcome you for the uh, first time, and uh, we uh, will also welcome uh, you again every month that we have a uh, monthly webinars. Um, Scott focuses on the small communities and the voices that are not uh, often here, and this is the mission of Scott. We bring the scholars, community, and uh, we bring academia together uh, to create a dialogue, and we hear the voices. Uh, and we share information. As uh, uh, we go uh, every time, we invite our president of Scott, Professor Jafari Jafari, to invite us with uh, opening remark. Professor Jafari, floor is yours. Uh, before uh, you start, uh, Jafar, I would like to ask everybody to uh, select the, the uh, channel that you like. If you um, um, see in the bottom, we have English and Bahasa. Some of our speakers are going to speak in Bahasa. And at that time, you should uh, select English chan uh, channel that you can uh, hear the translation uh, simultaneously. Uh, Professor Jafari, back to you. Yes, good morning. Uh, and I say good morning intentionally because it's early morning here. Uh, it's uh, almost one o'clock in the morning. And I know the rest of the audience are basically in the afternoon or uh, uh, or evening uh, sessions. Uh, welcome to uh, our Scott webinar series. Uh, Dr. Kazem already mentioned the uh, a brief history of the. Professor Jafari, you are muted. Can you unmute yourself? Was I un unmuted from the start? E e no, no, no. <laughs> Just from the interruption time. Okay. Well, yes. again, welcome. I don't know how much of that you had. Um, my microphone was on. I don't know what happened that it went off. Um, as Dr. Kazem mentioned, we are c concentrating on the small communities. And to, to this, I also want to add uh, entrepreneurs. Um, businesses in, in tourism which have very few employees and maybe may not be part of a village or community as such, could be on the road or other places. So uh, as Dr. Kazem said, the, the voices that we often, that are not often heard are going to be heard here. And how they do business, how they do their activities, uh, from whom they get help, can they get help from anybody? Um, uh, do they get training, for example, in the in urban centers, uh, opportunities for uh, for training uh, are abundant. Uh, the universities nearby usually who assist with that on the job training or education, etc. I'm always impressed uh, with the village tourism that uh, with the little means that they have, they do a wonderful job. And what is impressive about uh, village tourism is uh, the level of hospitality, which is always authentic. 
Uh, normally in urban cities, uh, urban destinations, authenticity goes away. Of course, quality service, but authenticity and hospitality is a bit lost. Uh, it is in the small communities that the real color and the real flavor and the real voice of the community comes out. And that's what the tourists like, uh, that authenticity and that uh, uh, originality. So we are here to learn from each other, uh, especially um, uh, Malaysia and Indonesia have been very successful in village tourism. And some of the awards have gone to these two countries who were the initiators of uh, village tourism since some uh, 40 years ago. Maybe somebody has the, the, the history behind that. So I welcome you. I will be with you here all the way throughout the webinar. I'm here to learn, um, to see how you are doing uh, the, the wonderful work that you are doing. I, I, I read that in the abstract that synergy is the keyword. And I want to see how the synergy is coming together to have uh, uh, tourists who are happy, tourists who are become repeaters, and uh, a community which is happy uh, to receive, accommodate, and uh, eventually send them home. So I will be with you all the time, and I come back at the end of the uh, webinar. Uh, Dr. Cousin, back to you. Okay, um, thank you, Prof. Jafar, um, and also thank you, Scott. Uh, for the smart community tourism um, to for organizing this event. So this is the second time we um, showcase the tourism village in Indonesia. The first one was in March 2022. Um, we had the Langran tourism village, uh, the one of the best tourism village uh, according to the UNWTO, and also uh, Candi Rejo tourism village. And now we have the opportunity to present Jibuntu Tourism Village, um, which is a very beautiful uh, village located in West Java. And actually next month, I'm going to bring some of the students from James Cook University to visit the village. Uh, this is uh, the program is under the uh, funding from the Australian government um, for the cultural tourism trip um, under the new Colombo plan. And um, so, I would like to introduce um, our speakers quickly uh, before we go on with our uh, event. Uh, so let me share the, um, our power, my PowerPoint. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. Can everybody see? Not yet. Not yet? OK. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's all it's okay now. It's opening now. Now we can see it. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, so for today's event about the synergy of the Pentahelix tourism stakeholder, um, uh, one of the panelists uh, here is Mr. Awam Hamara, uh, or we call it Pak Awam, Pak in Indonesia means Mr. So Awam Hamara is the head of the Jibuntu Tourism Village in Kuningan Regency, West Java, Indonesia. And under his leadership, Jibuntu has been winning several awards nationally and internationally, including in the ASEAN. And then we also have here uh, Mr. Rit Rito Riswanto, the head of Tourism Destination Division uh, of Youth Sport and Tourism Government Office for the Kuningan Regency in West Java. And so Mr. Rinto is going to represent the local government. Um, I believe we can learn a lot from Mr. Rinto about the, the strategy from the Kuningan uh, Regency uh, uh, to develop a tourism village in Kuningan uh, uh, area. And then we also have uh, here uh, Mr. Ricky Satyawanto, which is the director of the Inbound Panorama Group. Mr. Ricky has been um, uh, working in the tourism and hospitality industry for many, many years. Uh, so he's very, um, uh, he's a very expert in the uh, tourism industry and also managing and organizing uh, tours. 
And in here, we also have Ms. Abel Kiranti. Ms. Abel Kiranti is the journalist uh, for the Bingkai Warta Media. Uh, she, she learned, uh, actually, she has been involved in the Chibundu Tourism Village and also uh, she's, um, I think, involved in the uh, uh, managing the media center in Kuningan uh, Regency as well. And uh, also, we have here Mr. Henki Hermantoro. Mr. Henki Hermantoro uh, used to work in the Ministry of Tourism in, in of Indonesia, and he is a tourism observer and also a tourism lecturer at, at Trisakti Institute of Tourism, Jakarta. And uh, in here, we also have Mr. Agi Pradipta, uh, the tourism lecturer and head of students uh, division of Trisakti School of Tourism, Jakarta. So before joining in the academic world, Mr. Agi um, used to work um, uh, in the tourism industry. So he used to uh, bring people uh, for the for the tour uh, uh, trip. So Mr. Agi is here, and then uh, we also have a tourism student here, Amrina Roshada, uh, from Trisakti School of Tourism. So uh, Amrina has been helping trisakti um, in uh, uh, doing the some program in Cibuntu tourism village because Cibuntu tourism village um, actually um, uh, under the guidance or the mentorship from trisakti school of tourism and then uh, we also have uh, our uh, guest a special guest uh, speaker here uh, mr jojo subakia Mr. Jojo is the coordinator of Pagar Gunung Campsite of the Cibundu Tourism Village. This campsite is actually very popular and it's a very nice, um, a very nice campsite in the village. And I'm looking forward to actually visit the Cibundu next month. And myself, uh, Hera, uh, I'm the adjunct associate professor at James Cook University of Australia and also at the Sakti School of Tourism, Jakarta. And currently, I'm also the Regional Vice President of the International Tourism Studies Association, or ITSA. And we also have several interpreters here, and all of them are students. Uh, we have uh, Sean, Aulia, Naila, Jessica, and also Serafina and Aditya. And I think Serafina and Aditya are Indonesian students who are uh, currently studying in uh, Ritsumaikan University. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's the brief introduction uh, for all the uh, panelists and also the interpreters. So we thank you to all of the panelists and then also welcome for all the participants of this webinar. Hopefully we can have a, a insight into how the synergy between academy, government, business, media, uh, and also community um, can get together and develop the sustainable uh, tourism village. Um, all right, so without further, further delay, I would like to um, probably give a chance first to Pak Awam, yeah, Mr. Awam, Mr. Awam from the Cibuntu Tourism Village because he is the head of the Cibuntu. So of course we would like to know or to hear from Pak Awam about Cibuntu Tourism Village. So uh, Pak Awam, um, in this case, I would like to ask you, yeah, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about Cibuntu Tourism Village, mungkin bisa diceritakan Pak mengenai desa wisata Cibuntu? Bisa Bu Hera, hanya saja kami bicaranya dalam bahasa Indonesia Bu Hera. Bisa kan? Yeah. Bisa kami menyampaikan uh, makalah ini dengan bahasa Indonesia kan? Sorry. Halo Bu Hera. Ini Bu Hera. Vera, Vera. Silakan, Pak Pak Kawan. Boleh saya bicara dengan apa memakai bahasa Indonesia? Ya, yeah, silakan Pak. You can you can speak in Indonesian and there will be someone to translate. Di uh, is translating. Ya, yeah. silakan Pak Awam. Selamat sore, Ketap Tenun, Sampurasun. Itu salam bahasa Sunda itu, Bu Hera, ya. Sampurasun. Karena... Sampurasun. <laughs> Karena kami bicara masalah desa wisata, tentunya kami akan bicara mengenai kronologis desa Cibuntu menjadi desa wisata. Awalnya pada pertengahan tahun 2011, itu kami desa Cibuntu kedatangan mas, tiga mahasiswa utusan dari STP Trisakti Jakarta. 
yang mana mungkin beliau-beliau ditugaskan oleh STP untuk mengadakan observasi, survei dan uh, uji kelayakan, studi kelayakan mengenai desa Cibuntu, apa layak tidak menjadi desa wisata gitu Ibu. Ya. Setelah beberapa hari di Cibuntu mengadakan survei dan lain sebagainya, rupanya Cibuntu dianggap bisa atau layak menjadi desa wisata. Beliau kembali ke Jakarta dan beberapa bulan kemudian uh, ada Kemudian dari STP Trisakti juga, ya waktu itu dipimpin oleh salah seorang profesor, ada dokter, dokter, ada para dosen dan eh, mahasiswa pas kasarjana. Nah, setelah ada, ada tim dari STP Trisakti, ternyata beliau-beliau mengadakan eh, pembinaan atau pembinaan atau apa? Eh, Ya pembinaan di Desa Cibuntu tentunya karena nah, yang di ininya Desa Wisata tentunya mengadakan pembinaan dan pencerahan dalam hal Desa Wisata. Desa Wisata. Nah, setelah itu karena STP Strategi sendiri sedang mencari modul Desa Wisata, maka eh, kami langsung dibina dan dikembangkan bagaimana masyarakat menjadi eh, apa namanya menjadi yang diinginkan oleh SDP Trisakti yaitu menjadi desa wisata. Alhamdulillah sebenarnya menjadi desa wisata itu tidak mudah, Bu, Bu Hera. Tidak mudah menurut eh, para dosen dan para paskar sarjana dari SDP Trisakti bahwa menjadi desa wisata itu bisa memakan waktu sampai 8 sampai 9 batch. Tapi kalau udah Cibuntu dalam waktu 2 batch, beberapa bulan saja di Bina termasuk Pak Ari itu di situ arsiteknya maksudnya dalam beberapa bulan dan di awal bulan Februari Cibuntu sudah bisa dinyatakan sebagai layak untuk menjadi desa wisata dan di launching ada sub sub launching menjadi desa wisata. Itu di 2012 bulan Februari. Jadi hanya kurun waktu beberapa bulan dari pertengahan eh, pertengahan tahun 2011 di awal 2012 bisa, sudah bisa launching dengan pembinaan atau pengembangan yang terus menerus dilakukan oleh STP Trisakti. Ada banyak dari universitas universitas lain banyak yang hadir juga di Cibuntu. Cuman ini kan domainnya domain STP Trisakti. Alhamdulillah, dengan intens mengadakan pembinaan, pengembangan di Cibuntu, para di tahun itu juga, 2012, 15 Desember 2012, Cibuntu sudah bisa dinyatakan menjadi, bukan soft launching lagi, launching. Dideklarasikan Cibuntu pada 15 Desember 2012, itu menjadi desa wisata yang uh, definitif. Dan hal itu dideklarasikan oleh Waktu itu Pak Bupatinya Pak Haji An Hamid Suganda almarhum dan waktu itu perwakilan dari STP Trisakti adalah Pak Direktur Pak Direktur Pasca Pak Joko Sidibio itu kenapa Cibuntu bisa secepat itu meraih eh, predikat sebagai desa wisata karena kuncinya adalah masyarakat tanpa didukung oleh masyarakat nggak mungkin menjadi desa wisata makanya di sini kami punya modal masyarakat punya modal kesederhanaan cibuntu akhirnya ya banyak tamu yang hadir hadir juga dari mana mana dan eh, di tahun 2016 dengan ada penilaian eh, masalah homestay bukan cibuntu bukan menjadi juara lima apa? nomor lima se ASEAN seluruhnya homestay itu salah prediksi. Jadi hanya salah satu homestay yang nilai itu sebagai homestay yang peringkat lima di Asia. Itu tahun 2016. Nah, dengan adanya kami selalu bekerja itu, selalu nothing tulus, etos kerja ditingkatkan, dan sebagainya, banyak prestasi yang kami dapat. Berarti tadi masalah homestay, 
Dan 2017 itu kami mendapat pula penghargaan atau award dari kementerian itu kami menjadi uh, juara Cibinti nomor 2 di Indonesia setelah Bali kami dan Jogja. Cibinti itu komunitas bahasa autorisum yang berdasarkan berdasarkan untuk uh, pemberdayaan masyarakat. Kenapa? Kami di sini selalu memang apapun yang kita kerjakan, apapun yang kita dapat, kami betul-betul untuk kepentingan masyarakat. Itu masalah uh, kenapa Cibuntu bisa dan Cibuntu kenapa tidak ada hal-hal yang ibu ini kan ya. Karena Cibuntu kami ciptakan kehidupannya untuk kehidupan yang tentram, damai ya dan aman paling penting. Dan itu kan ada terang-terang di home, apa sabta pesona ibu. Teori apapun belum bisa kalau pengalaman saya ya itu belum bisa mengalahkan teori apapun baik itu teori kolaborasi baik itu pentahelik memang kedepannya bisa tapi tanpa kita mengadopsi masalah e, sabta pesona itu kayak agak sulit untuk menjadi desa wisata di situ di sabta pesona adalah ada pertamanya adalah aman sibuk alhamdulillah itu aman walaupun pinggir gunung walaupun di istilahnya desa di hutan dari semi aman sejak diresmikan menjadi desa wisata dan sebelumnya pun selalu aman damai dan terang tentara masyarakat Cibuntu. Karena apa ya? Akses dari dulu ada eh, galian C, tugulan pasir yang berapa puluh tahun, sebelum 10 tahun lebih. Itu kan dampak negatifnya untuk masyarakat banyak. Dampak ekosistem hancur, infrastruktur hancur, eh, dampak untuk masyarakat karena banyak orang begitu kan banyak yang eh, peminum-peminuman keras. Akhirnya tertularlah masyarakat kami juga banyak waktu itu yang eh, hobi minuman-minuman keras. Nah, saya awalnya saya di Jakarta, 30 tahun saya bekerja di Jakarta. 2003 itu ada kekosongan eh, kepala desa di Cibuntu. Jadi saya diangkir atau dipaksa untuk menjadi kepala desa di desa Cibuntu. Akhirnya saya resign sebelum pensiun jadi dari perusahaan yang saya kerja. Di 2003 saya mulai pilihan dan selalu tunggal waktu itu nggak ada yang ini uh, 2003 dan amda sampai sekarang saya masih kepala desa Insya Allah tahun besok pas 20 tahun saya udah mesti uh, istirahat di rumah nah hal itu apa ya keberhasilan itu kami dapat ya sebenarnya kenapa cuma untuk bisa begitu kami hanya melaksanakan pekerjaan yang istilahnya cari nanti tubuh kami selalu uh, istilahnya ikut uh, pedoman dari manapun, dari dinas dan sebagainya. Ya, hanya, ya itu. Apapun yang kita kerjakan, satu semuanya untuk masyarakat, kedua untuk uh, penuh yang lewat desa wisata. Dan dalam sabta pesona, dengan tidak adanya uh, yang peminum dan lain sebagainya, alhamdulillah cibun itu bisa aman. Karena begitu saya tutup, saya jadi kepala wakil desa, waktu itu belum dilantik. Saya ditanya dari uh, pejabat dari Pemda Kuningan, apakah galian C mau lanjut apa stop? Malam itu juga saya langsung stop. Stop. Dan alhamdulillah, besoknya langsung stop. Gitu. Stop. Nah, kami di sini ada babinsa, semua warung yang tadinya menyediakan minuman keras, saya rajia. Dan masalah pemuda pemudanya di saya kasih agak apa arahannya alhamdulillah sampai sekarang tidak ada yang apa me, suka minum minuman keras itu butuh itu dari segi keamanan pasti itu ke sana gitu dari kebersihan alhamdulillah kami di Cibuntu menerapkan itu seperti eh, di hari-hari Jumat itu ada yang namanya Jumsih Jumsih itu Jumat bersih nah, seluruh masyarakat di hari Jumat itu bersih bersih di sekitar rumah atau di rumahnya dan hari Seninnya atau hari Ahad itu sampah-sampah yang ada di rumah-rumah diangkut ke TPA tempat pembuangan terakhir dan di sana sudah disediakan seperti sampah organiknya kami olah karena di Cibuntu banyak kambing jadi ada ribuan kambing jadi bisa diolah menjadi pupuk organik dan e, untuk yang anorganiknya kami di situ sudah punya insinator 
yang untuk pembakaran yang tidak menimbulkan polisi dan lain lain sebagainya itu masalah kebersihan itu dan masalah kebersihan itu memang sebelum jadi desa wisata kami kalau malam keluar itu karena domba atau kambing di Cibuntu tadinya di apa di pemukiman banyak kandang-kandang domba di pinggir-pinggir desa di pinggir-pinggir desa itu banyak eh, ada uh, kandang-kandang Roma, tapi tahun 2009 atau 2010 saya sebelum jadi desa wisata, saya himbau, himbau masyarakat supaya uh, dipindahkan, tolong yang namanya kampung kandang Roma itu dipindahkan ke satu tempat atau tempat uh, tanah desa yang bisa dipergunakan oleh masyarakat tanpa subsidi, tanpa bantuan apapun dari desa. Alhamdulillah, semua kandang jadi pindah jadi satu tempat. Itu kan hal yang agak sulit dimanapun itu. Agak sulitnya kenapa? Ya itu, tanpa subsidi dana, sebenarnya kan kalau memindahkan kandang itu selain modal, uang, tenaga. Nah, nah itu kesulitan di tempat lain begitu. Tapi ini cukup untuk Makanya tadi saya bilang, saya punya modal masyarakat yang terlalu eh, gotong royong dan lain sebagainya. Itu. Ekses dari pemilihan kepala desa pun masyarakat bisa terbelah. Tapi saya tiga kali pemilihan kepala desa, malah kemarin tiga itu kami ada kandidat juga lawan, tapi selalu diciptakan keamanan dan ketertiban itu karena kunci keberhasilan cibun itu di situ mungkin dari hal-hal yang lainnya dalam hal perisai air bersih di cibun itu karena pinggir gunung jadi air itu langsung dari gunung kami tata ke rumah-rumah pakai seperti bar kedaan itu jadi masalah kebersihan mudah-mudahan ya, banyak di Cibuntu, apa pelamu yang masuk Cibuntu itu ya menguji bahwa di Cibuntu alhamdulillah bersih karena pembersihan itu jadi momok ya tiap di tempat wisata banyak sekali sampah yang jadi uh, kabupaten oleh para pengunjung Cibuntu dalam hal ini bisa mengatasi semuanya. Nah untuk tertib ya mudah-mudahan karena sudah aman kami ciptakan uh, hubungan dengan para Siapa lembaga yang ada di Cibuntu dengan BPD dan sebagainya masyarakat dengan organisasi yang ada di Cibuntu kami ciptakan uh, harmonis gitu ya. Jadi tidak pernah ada apa-apa yang uh, istilahnya ditentang oleh masyarakat. Makanya, nah dari uh, Sabtu pesawat tadi yaitu aman, bersih, tertib dan sejuk. Amla Cibuntu, desa Cibuntu, terletaknya di pinggir di kaki gunung, yang punya elevasi atau MDPL, ketinggian dari permukaan laut itu adalah 600 meter. Jadi masalah sejuk, insya Allah Cibuntu memang sejuk. Nah kalau masalah indah di situ, indah kan relatif. Ibu. Kami bilang Cibuntu indah, bisa saja Bapak Ibu datang ke Cibuntu, apa indahnya Cibuntu? Bisa saja begitulah. Kalau yang ke-6 itu adalah keramahan, karena memang kesadaran wisatanya sudah tumbuh di masyarakat, jadi eh, masalah keramahan itu sangat dijaga oleh masyarakat. Bisa buktikan ibu nanti kalau saya datang ke Cibuntu, bagaimana masyarakat, masyarakat kami eh, apa, ramah tidak. Nah, ya masalah terakhir adalah kenangan ibu. Kenangan itu yang harus sangat dijaga. Benar minimal dari kenyamanan, dari keamanan sebagainya terus eh, dari uh, itu tadi uh, kenangan kami selalu jaga itu jangan sampai ada tamu datang ke Cibuntu merasa kecewa atau punya kenangan buruk di Cibuntu walaupun tidak manis itu kami selalu jaga sehingga akhirnya Cibuntu dalam hal mengelola desa wisata walaupun yang ditampilkan oleh kami sangat sederhana ya kesederhanaan dan alami ya Alhamdulillah, selalu dapat eh, apa namanya award atau penghargaan dari pemerintah baik itu eh, kabupaten, provinsi, atau nasional atau internasional itu. Masalah serta pesona yang ini sudah saya uraikan. Nah, masalah apa namanya award atau penghargaan atau acipen dari eh, ini ada beberapa acipen yang kami berapa dapat ini kan bisa nanti lihat ibu di itu. Beberapa prestasi yang didapat oleh Desa Wisata Cibuntu sebagai berikut, Ibu. Penetapan Desa Wisata Cibuntu pada tahun 2012, yang tadi saya uraikan deklarasinya. Nah, homestay terbaik, salah satu homestay terbaik kelima di ASEAN. 
itu tahun 2016 dan CBT itu Community Based of Tourism peringkat dua nasional di tahun 2017. Ada juga desa ODF tahun 2017. ODF itu Cibuntu tidak ada yang buang air sembarangan. Semua punya MCK, Ibu. Itu makanya kami dideklarasikan oleh pemerintah waktu itu menjadi desa ODF. Dan di tahun 2019 karena di tahun 2018 2019 kami dapat ISTA Indonesia Sustainable Tourism Award. Bisa saja yang berkelanjutan, berkelanjutan. Kenapa dapat itu kami? Karena kami selain masalah dedikasi dan lain sebagainya, masalah desa wisata, kami selalu mendapatkan inovasi-inovasi di segala bidang. Hanya saja ya mungkin nanti saya jelaskan bagaimana kebutuh selalu sampai sekarang menampilkan kesederhanaan. Itu masalah ista dan saya waktu ulang tahun kuningan yang sian ratus kami atau saya dipanggil diundang oleh Pak Bupati di sidang Dewa Paripurna Dewan saya dianugerahi sebagai uh, inisiator desa wisata. Alhamdulillah dapat hadiah di itu saya pribadi itu Ibu. Tahun 2019. Dan di 2021 ini yang agak banyak tapi dapat award Ibu ya. Uh, yang pertama adalah 15 besar desa berlian bed 2 tingkat nasional dari BRI. Alhamdulillah. Dan yang selanjutnya desa wisata berkelanjutan atau kemenparap kementerian pariwisata tahun 2021 itu juga desa sadar hukum gubernur dari gubernur dari Pak Gubernur Jawa Barat dan desa sadar hukum dari Kemenhukam Nasional berbual satu desa sadar hukum dari Kemenhukam 2021 dan desa sadar hukum dari Pak Gubernur Jawa Barat itu awardnya dan ada beberapa ini yaitu masalah raksa prasada kategori perintis lingkungan saya sebagai pribadi ini karena saya dianggapnya uh, pemerhati lingkungan diberikan kalau di pusat itu uh, Kalpataru kalau di, di Kuningan atau di Jawa Barat itu raksa prasada kategori perintis lingkungan itu dari Pak Gubernur juga jadi ini di 2021 kami sangat banyak mendapat uh, atau penghargaan dari pemerintah dari siapapun dan di 2022 ini saya mendapat lagi undangan dari Pak Bupati waktu ulang tahun eh, apa namanya kuningan yang kesekian kali oh, sekian ratus kali di tahun 2020 ini saya mendapat lagi sebagai eh, motivator desa wisata dan dapat hadiah juga dari Pak Bupati Kuningan. Nah itu se, apa nama sekilas eh, kami yang kami terima dan mungkin. Uh, Ibu kan menanyakan bagaimana mendapatkan uang tadi sudah saya jelaskan nah, tanpa memikirkan di waktu kerja itu saya pikir desa cibu itu mau dapat apa tidak kan dalam hal motor saya kan kalau banyak pengharapan misalnya akhirnya lama uh, apa namanya kecewaan itu yang saya ini jadi kerja kerja biasa aja penilaian penilaian datang penilaian dari bertamu dari siapa pun dari provinsi siapa pun akhirnya bahkan itu. Nah, kalau kendala, Ibu, memang Cibuntu relatif tidak ada kendala atau handicap lah di dalam desanya, di, dari manapun juga, tidak ada. Karena kami diciptakan itu, eh, apapun masyarakat itu kami eh, ancap untuk eh, berdamai, tentram, dan sebagainya. Jadi, lama selama ini tidak pernah ada hal-hal yang istilahnya menjadi ini di desa wisata, desa Cibuntu. Mungkin uh, Cibuntu sampai sekarang masih menyuguhkan kesederhanaan sederhana desa Cibuntu. Karena apa? Satu memang kami pertahankan hal-hal yang begitu, ya masalah budaya, masalah adat, masalah uh, ini uh, budaya tanah dan ciri sekalian budaya tetap maknanya budaya lokal yang di ini. Nah, kendala yang lainnya, ya masalah pemodalan. Saya sudah jelas saja karena Pemodalan ini mungkin karena kemarin pandemi, ya mungkin pusat merasa apa mungkin belum tahu bahwa Cibuntu itu banyak prestasi yang didapat sehingga mengangkat baik itu kabupaten, baik itu provinsi maupun nasional 
dengan adanya wad-wad yang terima asal cpn cpn yang kami terima. Nah, kenapa lagi masalah eh, ini dana dari pusat pun tidak, kabupaten pun apa alasannya kabupaten kuningan punya pad-nya itu kabupaten paling kecil di Jawa Barat. Jadi ya saya sadar juga memang tidak ada uangnya mau apa. Selama tiga tahun kami nasib hanya ada di 2001, 2021 ada kucuran dari Pak Gubernur Jawa Barat itu kami sebenarnya dapat uang sekitar lima miliar untuk pembangunan desa Cibuntu hanya kan kena repokusing karena gara-gara uh, hai, apa, uh, COVID-19 ini jadi yang turun hanya 2 miliar memang sudah diperuntukkan untuk pembangunan sarana ibadah yang 3 M untuk pembangunan sarana uh, wisata itu masih belum turun dan mudah-mudahan di tahun besok bisa turun Pak Gubernur kasihan dengan si Buntu yang memang betul-betul kami akhirnya mendapat desa eh, mandiri inspiratif juga dari Pak Menteri Perwisata ya memang kami mandiri betul-betul mandiri ini. nah untungnya ada satu pendana ini tuh ada eh, satu pengusaha eh, lokal atau ya orang orang Cibuntu sendiri nah itu sangat per, apa lah, perhatian kenapa kemajuan atau e, penunjang untuk desa wisata di Cibuntu jadi makanya tar, kalau ibu mungkin menyakan nanti masalah PGC pagar gunung campsite itu itu memang betul-betul e, ada satu e, apa salah ada seorang pengusaha yang sangat peduli terhadap kemajuan Cibuntu dibuatlah dulunya itu jadi uh, tempat galian C yang tanahnya banyak mangkrak dan sebagainya direklamasi dan dijadikan tempat wisata sampai sekarang dan kalau saya kalau nilai kembali BFV pun kapan bikin one point pun kapan berapa puluh tahun tapi itulah dengan keilasan beliau uh, apa namanya pakar gunung camp site itu di mana sekarang diserahkan kepada e, Bumdes yaitu Badan Usaha Misik Desa untuk bersama begitu diserahkan gitu. Jadi itulah alhamdulillah ada penunjang tuh yang sangat betul-betul ikhlas untuk betul-betul penunjang desa wisata dan untuk kemajuan Cibuntu yaitu e, Pagar Gunung M Site. Itu saja Ibu mungkin saya jelaskan barangkali nanti ada dialog dan saya dalam memimpin itu selama 30 tahun tidak ada eh handicap atau apapun. Karena apa? Mungkin jadi pemimpin itu yang saya rasakan pengalaman ini saya. Bukan masalah teori dari Ayo, itu masalah uh, akademisi yang bisa menyampaikan masalah teori. Ini semua pengalaman. Saya jadi uh, narasumber di Garut, dua kali di Bogor kemarin, di Bandung sendiri, di mana-mapun. Yang saya selalu bawakan ini. Memang dasarnya ini. Kalau ini kan jadi desa wisata. Saya dalam memimpin, saya memimpin punya moto saya, Satu punya kapabilitas, yang namanya kepala desa atau pemimpinan. Yang kedua punya power. Dimanapun sulit, istilahnya menyetop galian C, karena kepala desa tidak punya power. Yang paling terakhir yang saya laksanakan, dan saya laksanakan selama ini, masalah kejujuran, masalah honestian. Itu saja Ibu, terima kasih. Mohon maaf kalau ada hal-hal yang mungkin kurang uh, di hati semuanya. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat sore. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oke, okay, uh, terima kasih banyak Pak Awam. Uh, thank you very much Pak Awam. So it's uh, quite comprehensive that you explain thank about Jibutu, the challenges and how important is the community support as the key success of the Jibutu tourism development. And um, and then it's very interesting that actually Jibutu tourism village is um, initiated by the two, uh, by the tourism students who visited the the village. Right. Um, okay. Next, uh, we go to the uh, uh, Parito. Parito, are you there, Parito? Parito. Okay. Maybe if not, then. Um, oh, can... oh yeah, Parito, you there? Okay. Yeah. So Parito is from the local government, from the uh, head of the tourism uh, division um, in Kuningan Agency. So let's hear from Parito the how uh, the roles of the government in supporting Cibuntu Tourism Village. Uh, please, Parito, the time is yours. Oh, oh. Ya, Bu Hera, terima kasih. Uh, video saya belum bisa dinyalakan ya, Bu, oleh hostnya. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, 
Do you need Do you need help with the PowerPoint, Pa? Or you are going to present your PowerPoint? Ya, saya belum diizinkan oleh host untuk memulai video, Bu. Oh, oke. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah. Prof. Kazim, okay. uh, how to... Yes, he can use he this cannot, video now. Yeah, sudah, Bu. Oke. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Pak Rito, uh, yeah, you can maybe you can present the, the uh, five minutes to present this one. Ya, yeah, terima kasih. Bu Hera, Mr. Jafar, selamat sore, selamat siang, Pak Bu, Bunku, hadir juga Pak Haji Jojo, Pak Haji dari STP Tertakti, kemudian Abel ya dari media, One Agent, sedikit saya memberikan uh, paparan mengenai desa wisata yang sedang kami kembangkan di Kabupaten Kuningan. Uh, sebagaimana kita maklumi bahwa Kabupaten Kuningan ini Uh, memiliki beberapa uh, misi yang takut. Ada suara ya? Ya, yeah, I unmute already. Oke, okay. bisa terdengar bu? Jelas suaranya? Oke okay, Pak. Okay. Ya, ya. Salah satu misi Kabupaten Kuningan yaitu mewujudkan pembangunan kawasan pedesaan berbasis pertanian, pariwisata, budaya dan potensi lokal untuk mempercepat pertumbuhan serta pemerataan ekonomi rakyat. Di mana salah satu targetnya adalah mewujudkan 100 desa pinunjul dan 25 desa wisata. Uh, yang sudah tertuang dalam RPJMD Kabupaten Kuningan. Nah, Cibuntu ini berada di salah satu desa di Kabupaten Kuningan, yaitu di wilayah Kuningan Utara, uh, dengan jumlah penduduk uh, di bawah uh, seribu jiwa, sehingga uh, nilai uh, gotong royongnya masih uh, sangat kental sekali. Nah, ini beberapa alur kebijakan dalam pengembangan pariwisata, di Kabupaten Kuningan, salah satunya yaitu pengembangan produk, pengembangan perwilayahan, SDM dan kelembagaan, serta aspek pemasaran. Di mana salah satunya yaitu yang sedang kami kembangkan adalah bagaimana mengembangkan pariwisata di Kabupaten Kuningan ini berbasis pemberdayaan masyarakat. Sehingga masyarakat ini pada akhirnya harus dikenalkan dengan bagaimana bisa menyentuh digital marketing untuk mewujudkan 25 desa wisata yang kompetitif dan berdaya saing. Ada beberapa uh, kriteria uh, pengembangan desa wisata, yaitu rintisan, ada berkembang, maju, dan mandiri. Nah, ini treatmentnya jelas sangat berbeda sekali uh, antar uh, kriteria tersebut, di mana rintisan ini kita lebih fokus pada peningkatan produktivitas UMKM dan keterampilan itu. Kemudian di berkembang ini lebih fokus pada bagaimana menata lingkungan di sekitar desa wisata itu, kebutuhan sarana prasarana bagi kebutuhan wisatawan. Kemudian di tahapan maju ini kita lebih meninjau aspek infrastruktur serta sarana-sarana yang dibutuhkan oleh desa wisata itu sendiri. Uh, namun tetap memperhatikan aspek-aspek uh, uh, penting di antara di antaranya adalah uh, bagaimana tata kelola di desa wisata itu sendiri. Nah di Mandiri ini lebih pada branding, bagaimana bisa lebih uh, berdaya saing dalam pengembangan promosinya. Ada beberapa konsep yang dikembangkan dalam pengembangan desa wisata, yaitu konsepnya adalah ekowisata. Ekowisata ini lebih pada uh, konsentrasi pada alam dan lingkungan. Kemudian di Sibuntu ini sendiri memang dari tahun 2010 sudah mulai dilakukan konservasi, yaitu penanaman bambu di kawasan Taman Nasional yang dilakukan oleh pemerintah desa dan masyarakat di desa Sibuntu. Nah ini ada hal yang lebih penting lagi, yaitu bagaimana masyarakat dan pemerintah desa itu 
reklamasi lahan-lahan yang tidak produktif bekas galian e, pasir menjadi bumi perkemahan. Nah ini merupakan sebuah nilai yang memang sangat e, luar biasa bagi pengembangan e, konservasi di, di Kabupaten Kuningan pada umumnya. Di mana e, keberlanjutan e, flora, fauna, e, ekologi e, ini lebih, lebih bisa di, di, terjamin ke depannya. Nah kemudian tentu dari beberapa konsep tersebut harus memberikan dampak atau manfaat e, bagi masyarakat e, serta menghasilkan beberapa e, nilai plus bagi para wisatawan yang datang ke desa tersebut. Prinsip-prinsip yang dikembangkan yaitu tadi e, ada konservasi, ada reklamasi, ada e, partisipasi masyarakat, ya, pemberdayaan, di mana sebut juga sudah mendapatkan apresiasi di tingkat nasional dalam hal pemberdayaan masyarakatnya juga e, menghasilkan e, nilai ekonomi serta edukasi bagi para wisatawan. Nah ini saya rasa konsep dan prinsip tersebut sudah diterapkan dengan baik di Desa Cibuntu, tinggal e, bagaimana kita bisa menjamin keberlanjutannya. Nah ini ada beberapa pola inovasi yang dikembangkan, e, tentu e, masyarakat sebagai e, aktor penting dalam pengembangan desa wisata ini fungsi untuk ya tipe perubahannya bertahap pola pendekatannya adalah bottom up jadi kami tidak menunjuk desa Ciputu itu menjadi desa wisata tetapi eh, pemerintah desa dan masyarakat memang mendeklarasikan diri dan menyatakan siap menjadi desa wisata sehingga eh, hal inilah yang 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 saya rasa tepat di, dilakukan dalam pengembangan desa wisata jadi eh, biarkan masyarakat itu sendiri yang mendeklarasikan oh, produk yang dikembangkan adalah jasa usaha masyarakat atau UMKM di mana di sana juga dapat beberapa uh, usaha baru masyarakat ya dengan adanya beberapa homestay yang dikembangkan dengan pola kerjasama itu dengan akademisi dengan sekretaris sakti yang dilakukan sejak 2010 dengan pemerintahnya sendiri di Kabupaten Kuningan ya, Alhamdulillah Cibuntu ini sangat uh, kooperatif. Ya, kemudian ada beberapa pihak media, ada pihak eh, industri atau eh, halangan eh, pengusaha yang memang sengaja dijadikan sebagai mitra dalam pengembangan desa wisata ini. ini Tahapan-tahapan tadi mungkin sudah disampaikan oleh eh, Pak Kepala Desa bagaimana eh, awalnya adalah mengidentifikasi baik itu identifikasi sumber daya manusia, identifikasi sumber daya alam dan sumber daya sumber daya lain yang bisa dikembangkan. Kemudian pada akhirnya membuat bisnis plan yaitu bagaimana masyarakat itu bisa melakukan usaha-usaha baru di desa wisata. Ini mungkin tidak bisa dibahas. Nah ini jadi konsep terakhir ini sudah dilaksanakan dengan baik di Cibuntu. Uh, ini adalah keterkaitan bagaimana visi misi itu bisa diwujudkan dengan pola pemberdayaan masyarakat tidak lepas dari bagaimana uh, tugas kita untuk bisa uh, memberikan wawasan kepada masyarakat yang sadar wisata dengan uh, mengimplementasikan wisata pesona. Nah di Cibuntu ini sendiri ada beberapa stakeholder, ada Pokdarwis atau kelompok sadar wisata, ada Bumdes, ada pelaku seni ada eh, kelompok ternak atau budidaya, di sana ada kampung domba ya. Ada CSR juga, ada kelompok UMKM, ada pengelola homestay, ada pengrajin, ada eh, HWT ya, pengelola makanan khas, dan serta ada beberapa dinas di Kabupaten Kuningan yang memang ikut terlibat dalam pengembangan desa wisata ini. Nah ini juga eh, masyarakat di sana kebanyakan adalah petani. Ini juga merupakan aktor penting yang terus perlu diberikan edukasi bagaimana masyarakat itu sendiri bisa uh, memberikan nilai pariwisata dari aktivitas mereka sehari-hari. Nah, ini data yang tersedia, ada 107 homestay, ada beberapa tenda glamping di sana yang sudah disiapkan, ada tempat peribadatan, ada pendopo, ada kolam renang, ada beberapa space publik yang sudah tersedia yang dibutuhkan oleh para wisatawan. Nah, ini data kunjungan. Alhamdulillah tahun ini ada eh, beberapa peningkatan eh, 
pengunjung di tahun ini mudah-mudahan bisa memberikan dampak ekonomi yang baik bagi masyarakat. Ini ada beberapa jumlah homestay, jadi ada jumlah tenda. Ini program-program dari kami dari pemerintah yang sudah disampaikan ke Desa Wisata Cibungku. Mungkin nanti kita bisa lebih tajam dalam diskusi. Nah, ini ada beberapa peluang yaitu bagaimana eh, desa wisata ini bisa memberikan peluang bagi dibukanya lapangan kerja baru. Nah, itu itu eh, dalam rangka peningkatan saraf hidup masyarakat yang pada akhirnya bisa meningkatkan eh, indeks eh, pembangunan manusia. Kemudian ada beberapa eh, tantangan yaitu bagaimana masyarakat ini sendiri harus lebih memberikan pelayanan yang baik, meningkatkan kreativitasnya untuk memperkuat image desa wisata Cibuntu. Kemudian ada beberapa resiko-resiko, yaitu penanggulangan sampah, polusi udara, dan lain-lain yang harus diperhatikan. Ini ada beberapa target dalam pengembangan desa wisata yang terus bertahap kami kembangkan. Ada hal-hal penting juga dalam pengembangan desa wisata, antara lain yaitu prosesnya dilakukan secara bertahap dari mulai SDM, kelembagaan, baru ke sarana-prasarana, serta pengembangan digital marketing yang harus diperhatikan. <tuh> Paket wisata tentu menjadi salah satu hal penting yang perlu disiapkan oleh pengelola desa wisata agar masyarakat bisa betul kreatif mengemas uh, aktivitas wisatawan yang datang ke desa wisata Cibuntu. Nah, Alhamdulillah di Cibuntu ini sudah menyentuh uh, uh, pemasaran uh, digital serta bekerja sama dengan beberapa travel agent di luar kota. Nah, mungkin itu merah yang bisa disampaikan. Terima kasih atas kesempatannya. Mohon maaf apabila ada hal yang berkenan. Mungkin kita bisa lanjut nanti ke desa Terima kasih. Selamat sore. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ya. Oke, okay, uh, thank you very much Pak Rito. This very uh, interesting presentation. So I think you don't mind if you share this PowerPoint ya Pak to the audience. Pak Rito, is okay? Ya. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Terima kasih, yeah, because the, the, there is an audience who wants to have the PowerPoint, so we will share it with you. Um, so thank you, Barito, for presenting uh, the, uh, the strategic and the policy of the local government to assist tourism uh, village in Jibuntu. Now we are going to move to uh, our next panelist. Uh, we have here uh, from uh, the industry, Pak uh, pa Ricky. Oh, this is one. Oh, Parito, you oh, okay? Pariki, are you there, Pariki? Yes, yes, I'm still here. But my uh, video, I believe, it's uh, stopped by the host. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yes, because uh, if you click, there is you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Mm -hmm. Can you try it now, please? Ah, now it's working. Oh, good yeah. afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, uh, Bu uh, Hera. Thank you. Good mm -hmm. afternoon, all the panelists, speakers. Salute to Mr. I mean, Chief of Desa Cibuntu. Salute. Ma. And um, uh, well, uh, thank you, Bu Hera, to invite me into this uh, discussion forum. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, um, my ba my background. I'm from the company named Panorama Tours in Indonesia. So it's been in industry since 1972. So it's a well-established company. And uh, we're doing mostly in the, I mean, in the beginning uh, with the inbound uh, tourism. So we create a package tour around Indonesia and uh, we promote it. And then also we operate the tours with Indonesia. And uh, we have, we've been passing a quite serious challenging time or period uh, during the COVID, which is uh, almost three years. We have no single movement due to the uh, pandemic because our focus actually 
to invite or to sell our product to overseas, uh, uh, what we call it, partners, overseas agent partner around the world to I mean, to promote it, to what we call it, to, in, to ask their uh, what the tourists to visit Indonesia. It's not, not only Bali particularly as the main destination, but several parts of Indonesia. Well, uh, during the, uh, as you might probably notice that during the COVID or the pandemic, our government decided to close all the international border, which is, means there is no single tourist or single uh, movement that we have uh, since April 2020 until uh, government decided to open again or reopen again with friendly regulation in uh, uh, April 2022. So um, a question is how we survive. So we have to I can say that we have to minimize all efficiency or we minimize all our stuff, do some efficiency. And also we put, I mean, uh, keep in touch with all our agent partners in, I mean, overseas to inform what's happening during this pandemic, what's happening about this, uh, I mean, the activity, the situation in the country itself. So we are sharing because uh, <clears throat> this is very important to get in touch with them Otherwise, we are out from the radar of the destination of a tourist itself. I mean, uh, the other side, what the staff doing? So we, since uh, 2016, we, uh, we are a part of what we call as a travel life. This is a sustainable uh, sustainability uh, organization based in Amsterdam. So we do a lot of training uh, by online. Yeah, to have a kind like uh, more details or more engaged to what we call as a sustainable, uh, responsible tourism, because we believe that after a recovery or after this uh, Indonesia open or after the border open, we believe that it will be changed behaviors of a tourist. Means number one, it's uh, social distancing is important and also a fight of the crowd and they are focused on the eco or green tourism, something like that. So that's why we have a concept, what we call as the local engagement. So all the itineraries should be based on local engagement and authentic experience and then participate learning arts and heritage and, and then being res responsible with the nature. So it means we try to design or uh, what we call it, uh, uh, set up all the itinerary, all the program, more engaged to the people. So means that more to social engagement or social uh, with the uh, common, I mean, social community based uh, tourism, something like that. So uh, this is uh, should be authentic, not artificial. So what we have here, especially that, I mean, we're lucky and we should be glad that Indonesia, especially the island of Java, during the, <clears throat> what we call uh, COVID or the pandemic, uh, almost two years, there are many uh, village declared as a desa wisata or tourism village with its, what we call uh, uh, a specialty or with its uh, highlights in the village, what we call it, focusing uh, 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 or organizing the people into get what you call it a value add or a benefit from the surrounding that we have. So uh, this is we explain the detail also to our partners or partners. We also discuss around and uh, I mean with the partners that is which is this is important have brought in the future itinerary not only seeing or not on the sightseeing only focusing and we should have be we should be engaged with the people instead we see the country we meet the people so not only a people object part of the product itself so uh, in our product program we put some of the tourism village for sure, Indonesia currently, uh, I can say that uh, focusing or more or the tourists, they still what we call 
uh, 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 focus on the main destination like Bali or Komodo Island itself. This is a kind like um, uh, not euphoria, but like a revenge of the tourists because they want to go outside of the country. So the, the, the but in their minds, only once going to Bali and from Bali, they are going somewhere else. But currently, more people are going to Bali. But soon, or I mean, uh, in the coming years, so other parts like Yogyakarta or West Java even and Sumatra, it's going to be a popular based on what we call it, uh, uh, the very, what we call it, uh, well organized on the infrastructures that we can set up more easily to set up or to make an itinerary that to exploring all the things or the all uh, specific object that we can see. So for you, for, for sure, um, uh, uh, we still keep on <clears throat> what we call it, uh, do a kind of some, a lot of creative things to be to see then based on sustainability and also based on community engagement. I think that's only a uh, short from me, uh, uh, Buhera. So I believe that it will, uh, what you call it, bring something uh, kind of like uh, ID uh, uh, for me also in creating a new itinerary or product for others, for some market. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Pariki, um, for the uh, Insta presentation. Um, so uh, yeah, it's just, I think from some talks, we I can see that the community engagement is very important. Um, uh, empowering community because it's a key success to uh, develop the, uh, the, the uh, uh, tourism village. Okay, I will share uh, my presentation book if you wish. Book. Sorry, I will share my presentation if you wish to have. Yes, yeah, okay. that'll be great. Part. So you can okay. also maybe share to the so audience. I will share already so in the can... chat room. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pariki. Thank you. Okay, and then uh, now we are going to uh, find out what the uh, the media think about uh, Cipuntu Tourism Village. So in here we have Miss Abel Kiranti. Um, hello, Miss Abel, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, Bahera. <laughs> Selamat sore, we will content buat semuanya. Yes, good afternoon, Selamat sore, Bu Abel. So yeah. in here, uh, Bu Abel will tell us about uh, the roles of media and, and how the media um, uh, can can promote the tourism, uh, the Put Cibuntu Tourism Village. Um, please, uh, Ibu Abel, the time is yours. Uh, I can speak Indonesian. Yes, that's okay, Bu. Okay. Uh, baik untuk semuanya. Berbicara tentang desa wisata, khususnya desa wisata Cibuntu, bagi seluruh masyarakat Kabupaten Kuningan khususnya, itu sebuah kebanggaan, sangat istimewa. Saya masih ingat awal mula desa wisata Cibuntu yang terletak di belakang lereng kaki Gunung Ciremai itu, ya, di mana waktu itu berevolusi menjadi desa wisata yang saat ini memang sudah mulai dikenal di dunia internasional. Seperti yang tadi eh, Abah Kuo eh, sampaikan, eh, perjalanan desa Cibuntu menjadi desa wisata sehingga eh, bisa dikenal eh, di dunia internasional, itu memang saya eh, sedikit banyaknya mengikuti perkembangan desa Cibuntu. <laughs> memang di sini eh, didasari eh, pada kesi apa, kesiapan ke seluruh, eh, seluruh masyarakat eh, lokal sebagai modal dasar pengembangan desa Cibuntu itu sendiri sebagai desa wisata berbasis pemberdayaan masyarakat eh, serta potensi sebaran cagar budaya dan potensi alam lainnya yang terdapat di desa Cibuntu. Maka uh, dari situ berbagai upaya pun dilakukan oleh uh, beberapa uh, dinas terkait, khususnya di sini mungkin uh, dinas uh, pariwisata uh, banyak melakukan pembinaan-pembinaan, uh, sosialisasi, maupun uh, hal lainnya seperti yang tadi telah diungkapkan oleh uh, Pak Kabidrito, juga oleh uh, para akademisi lainnya. 
perjalanan desa wisata Cibuntu tersebut ini tentu uh, sudah membuat uh, bangga masyarakat Kuningan khususnya ya. Tapi kebanggaan di sini menurut saya itu bukan suatu kepuasan. Karena Kabupaten Kuningan di sini kan mempunyai 367 desa uh, dan kelurahan yang diantaranya juga uh, banyak desa-desa uh, lain yang memiliki potensi selayaknya desa Cibuntu. Banyak desa yang berpotensi lain yang membutuhkan dari pemerintah daerah. Yang jelas, desa wisata Cibuntu ini uh, menurut saya pribadi yang uh, uh, apa uh, suka monitor ke tempat-tempat wisata, salah satunya objek wisata Cibuntu, ini memang super komplit ya. Kenapa super komplit? Karena bagi saya desa Cibuntu itu adalah serpihan surga tersembunyi di kaki Gunung Ciremai. Jadi tidak uh, tidak hanya keindahan alamnya yang semata uh, tertata, tapi juga seluruh produk wisatanya itu melibatkan seluruh anggota masyarakat desa. Jadi di sini memang uh, kompak sekali warga desanya. Saya salut sama Pak Kuwu. Pak Kuwu is the best. <laughs> Uh, dan ini memang uh, harus dijadikan uh, contoh bagi desa-desa lainnya. Bagaimana sosok Pak Uwu ini, uh, Putri ya Pak Uwu ini memang sangat inovatif dan mempunyai keinginan yang tinggi untuk membangun desanya menjadi uh, desa wisata yang luar biasa. Ini harus dicontoh oleh desa-desa lainnya. Uh, juga untuk seluruh program apa? Uh, Produk wisatanya juga ini memang uh, jelas melibatkan semua uh, sektor, semua semua unsur yang ada di masyarakat desa. Sehingga dalam pengembangan desa wisata Cibuntu ini tidak hanya berpengaruh pada uh, ekonominya saja, tetapi juga lestari lingkungannya, uh, kelestarian alamnya, sosial budaya masyarakatnya, terutama dengan berkaitan uh, dengan nilai-nilai kebotong royongan dalam mengembangkan berbagai potensi uh, serta aktivitas masyarakat itu sendiri. Dan ini memang telah menjadi daya tarik sendiri bagi uh, wisatawan yang datang ke Desa Cibutu. Mungkin itu uh, Mbak Hera sedikit uh, tanggapan dari saya terkait Desa Cibuntu. Terima kasih. Oke, okay, thank you, uh, Bu Abel, um, this, uh, uh, for uh, sharing with us um, your perspective from the media as a journalist. And now we move to uh, uh, Pak Hengki. Pak Hengki, are you there? Maybe while waiting for Pak Hengki, Pak Agi, do you want to share first uh, the, the role of Trisakti in uh, guiding Cibuntu Tourism Village, becoming the tourism, uh, you know, the uh, very uh, successful tourism village? Or maybe we can. Uh, Uh, Prof. Kazem, maybe we, we can unmute uh, Pak Hengki. Maybe after this, then we'll go to Pak Hengki. Please, uh, Pak Agi, the, the time is yours. Pagi. Dr. Hera, can you spell uh, his name for me in the chat, please? R W M. R W M. Uh, I, uh, sorry, A A G I E. 
You already co host. You should be able. We, we cannot hear you, Pagi. Maybe your microphone, your microphone, probably. Because we can see him and his uh, screen is shared. So there should be a microphone problem. Let me. Um, no, he's on mute too. Buhera? Yes, okay. Yes. Can you hear my voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I can hear you now. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, maybe uh, the problem with the uh, microphone. Okay, uh, first of all, um, please let me introduce myself. My name is Agi Pradita. I'm one of uh, the lecturer from the School of Tourism from Travel Business Department. So I've been honored to join to this um, webinar, international webinar. So uh, I'd like to share about the experience uh, this is School of Tourism as the associate to guidance the Tibutu village as a tourism village. So <clears throat> the information is story is uh, starting from not uh, in the year of 2011, but uh, more than 2000 before 2011 uh, in the year of 2008 yeah when we we do uh, the project to community empowerment yeah starting 2003 with others uh, village and until to chibuntu village so our institution this is two of tourism uh, was established uh, since uh, 1969, so this year we have already uh, 53 years old. So uh, about the program, Director Ubuntu, okay. Trisaki Soul Tourism, um, we come to the Tibuntu village uh, in the middle of uh, 2011, so uh, why we come to the Chibuntu on that time? Uh, because um, it is in the, incidentally, our student uh, do some uh, internship program in the one of travel bureau. So one of the manager, uh, he is uh, from Chibuntu Felix. So uh, our student uh, since the year 2008 always do one of the uh, subject in guiding practice to visit the village. So therefore the manager see about the picture on the time uh, from the friends there. So the manager Pak Mulyana asked the student, uh, so where, where is the village? Oh, in um, uh, Chanirajo village. So, Pamuliana said to the student, can Trisakti come to my village to, to build to uh, Chibuntu to become a tourist village? So since uh, that day, when the three people, a person from Chibuntu came to our campus and invite uh, our campus, what was Pa Awam mentioned, came to uh, Chibuntu Felix, and we make a first baseline survey. After that survey, so we, we, we see that the Chibuntu uh, existing condition, as uh, you can see in the, in the picture, so, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the access is very uh, damaged about the, you know, the uh, environmental damage about their like a sand mining, yeah? illegal sand mining, uh, what was uh, uh, our mention. So we try to looking for what is the potential of the village. First, we look about the 
people. The people is so uh, friendly. And also the people, uh, we look the people, uh, they are so eager to, to make a good activity. So this is the strength, uh, fundamental of the, uh, when we want to build the village to become a tourism village. Therefore, we uh, uh, involve to furthermore to the village with the program. So first the program is um, initiated by the, our uh, postgraduate uh, department. So they uh, asked the student of master program, PETS2, to uh, go to Chibuntu and make uh, field research. And we starting from the baseline survey, after that, uh, focus group discussion, and after the focus group discussion, the result, we make uh, analyze, we SWOT analysis, and we uh, proceed to the uh, some uh, training program, yeah, related to the, to the uh, Sapta Persona and also the hospitality. So not uh, just for the uh, training program, uh, most of students also take uh, their field research as a, a final project or thesis. So therefore we can say the Chibuntu uh, was um, planning, yeah, uh, scientifically and also not just uh, planning, also implementing because we have also a program uh, from vocation and also a bachelor program. So we collaborate, especially to our students from travel business. They are doing a guiding practice to the village and also they make uh, a package to the village. So uh, uh, it seems stimulate the the interaction between the academic atmosphere and also the people, how part by part they move and they develop uh, the concept of the Chibuntu village. So, <clears throat> yeah, as you can see uh, on the screen, so it is the statically uh, data from uh, Central Bureau of Statistics. So first about the population in the year of 2018 is 901 people and 2019 is 985 uh, people and also 2020 uh, close to 1,010 people. So Chibuntu is very uh, huge uh, uh, area uh, for the land area because 1,102.84 yeah, hectares. So it's very big uh, land area because the area is already includes the national park of Chermay Mountain. So how do we... Um, make a management system, not only about the attraction, about the hospitality, also we uh, empower the people how to make a, a sustainable with the environment, because it's very important. So we look also the homestay, yeah. In the year 2018, so homestay only 15 and is developed, yeah, 2019 is 25 and now is close to 60 homestay. And also the small medium enterprise, you can see the growth, yeah, until now is 14 uh, members, yeah. They are doing and also they have a special what we call a gallery or house or small medium enterprise and also the tourist attraction 
Yeah. Now they have like pagar gunung and also uh, sport activity. So we can say now is more than 15 activity beside uh, culture activity. So <clears throat> activity conducted in Chibutu village based on community based of uh, community based of tourism. Therefore, the, the people, all the people, the villagers uh, evolve yeah, with the activity. One of the highlights of this um, village is the conservation. So they have a bamboo garden. Yeah? So the bamboo uh, was initiated uh, to recover, to replant when we ca first came in the year of 2011. So uh, uh, current days you can see is very dense uh, bamboo garden yeah? uh, in the Chibutu village. Therefore, uh, the government give the award to the Chibutu field, one of the uh, winner for uh, Indonesian Sustainable Tourism Award. <clears throat> so this, you know, you can see the, the picture, the, uh, the designation after field of observation, and also the group discussion with the communities. So it's not just a student, yeah? Uh, especially to the lecturer. And also now we have already uh, um, give the collaboration with the grant program. So uh, uh, recently for the student grant program by the Ministry of Education. So we come uh, to Chibuntu and we create the program to enhance the, the concept of the Kampung Kambing yeah, or uh, Goat Village because they have like a settlement yeah, separate with the people yeah, in the village area. So we uh, enhance the concept, not the, just for breeding or livestock. And we, uh, we assign also concept tourism, agro uh, tourism, especially for the, you know, um, how we make uh, the, uh, what we call the faces from the faces of the goat. So we, we create to become, uh, you know, the fertilizer. Sorry, Pak Agi, uh, two more minutes. Thank yeah, you. okay. Yeah, this is the, the data of the visited. So 90, uh, 29 countries with the 87 foreigners uh, visitor camp to Chibuntu, yeah, until 2019, and also this the uh, protocol, CHSI when the pandemic, and also is the the objective for Trisakti of tourism is the implement committee based tourism, yeah, as part is more responsibility concern develop the village and increase the welfare to the people in Chibuntu and for the community, the villagers can actively participate to develop quality, their human resource, improve their condition, yeah, start economic, yeah, uh, also to, uh, to the prosperity. So this is, you know, the strategy. First, we, we do the for baseline survey. And after that, what I mentioned about certain commitment, we, we uh, do the first group discussion and starting commitment also regularly we we come and visit and we make a program and yeah this is the you know for small medium enterprise with the local product okay especially for the agriculture yeah and this is the you know target achievement okay and also this is a visit for our minister yeah uh, last year, yeah, about uh, Chibuntu, when uh, Chibuntu always uh, also follow the Ade Adwi Anugrah Desa Wisata Indonesia, or like uh, a word for uh, tourism village Indonesia, and the results and the publication, and also a journal. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. 
uh, Madam Hera, I think this is a very you know, short presentation of about uh, about the Chibuntu and what about the STP Trisakti uh, rules yeah, to Chibuntu village. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pagi, um, for the presentation um, to and then tell us the story about uh, how Trisakti assisted uh, Chibuntu Tourism Village. Okay, and uh, now we're going to go to Pak Henki. Pak Henki already here. Mr. Henki, uh, how are you? So I think... Uh, uh, thank you, yeah, Buera. Yeah, uh -huh. so uh, yeah, I think we'll just... Yeah, please uh -huh. go ahead, Pak Henki. Yeah, let me share my uh, presentation, which I think is very short uh, due to the time limited. Yeah. First of all, uh, thank you very much uh, to invite me in this uh, very interesting uh, meeting uh, this afternoon or this morning. And the second one is uh, for me, it's very always interesting to talk about a village, especially uh, for a tourism village. Uh, I will talk uh, in the few of my uh, experience. I was in a government official and uh, I'm a planning, so I will uh, take a look at some uh, problems of uh, Desa Wisata from my point of view. Uh, the, let me make some this one. Uh, nowadays, the uh, tourism village become uh, popular in Indonesia. Uh, I call it the rise of tourism village in Indonesia, even though uh, tourism uh, village has a long history in Indonesia. As long as I know, it started from uh, 2000s in the uh, Borobudur area, the Candi Rejo, and uh, so many other uh, places, especially in Bali. Uh, it's most important for us, uh, for the, the government, because uh, it's proven that the tourism field brings both people welfare. It gave a better job, uh, better salary, better uh, experience, and so on. The second one is based on uh, many uh, research. Uh, there are many, I mean, um, some visitors is uh, interested to come to village during the COVID. 19 and also for remote areas. This is the second one why uh, village tourism is very important. Uh, village itself has its uh, very uh, interesting potential, especially for nature and culture, and very uh, and every uh, village has its own different uh, characteristics. Uh, I, I took them a short. Uh, slides. Uh, the second one is now this uh, we based on the statistic bureau we have about two two thousand two hundred uh, village tourism in Indonesia, and it is about uh, three percent of all uh, number of villages in Indonesia. It's a quite big number, but unfortunately the Ministry of Tourism is only. Uh, able to train every year for uh, 60, 60, 60 uh, tourism villages. So it means that uh, what uh, Mr. Awam, Mr. Awam, yeah, do in Tribunto uh, is very interesting because it's, uh, the development is coming from uh, the people, from the community, not what depend on the government. This is important thing. Uh, after that, it's important also the question is should the village be a village tourism? Because no, nowadays I see many villages so interesting uh, to be a village tourism. They try to make a, you know, a, the first track of to, to be a village tourism because so many incentives given by the government and so on. But the question is, uh, it's okay, but the question is how we develop uh, them. First of all, we have uh, talked about many do's in uh, village tourism, like the approach development is not growth, because many many people say the development, but the practice the practice is growth because we always talk about the numbers, 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 but not talking about the benefit of the people and so on. And though uh, many uh, villages also 
thinking about the greedy things, not the green thing. They are they are trying to attract so many people to come, uh, even though maybe it's not uh, really uh, much with uh, its carrying capacity in the village. Uh, the second thing is uh, the problems in uh, many. It's not that good, of course. I just mentioned some problems to be take care of. Uh, the tourism is actually not a good actually, but it's a vehicle to get the people's welfare. It's a tool. It's like a uh, sector of agriculture, uh, domba, and so on. The partnership is also important. So the the last one is I I wrote here. I, understand your caring capacity. It is important because the caring capacity is important for having a sustainable tourism development. But we sometimes almost always forget what we don't do in the village tourism. Uh, the first of all is uh, don't think about uh, greedy tourism. I'm sorry, this one. Uh, Tourism is a goal. Tourism is not a goal. Uh, don't think tourism is a goal because if you think tourism is a goal, you always put the numbers to be the goals. You always put the number of facilities, number of homestay, number of people coming and so on. But you never mention the benefit of the people. How many people get a better job? How many people uh, get involved in the tourism industry and having better quality of life? education and so on. Uh, the, the other thing is uh, the initiative should come from the, uh, don't think that the people can help you, but you have to help yourself, like what Jikundu uh, does. It is important. Thing. Uh, the satisfaction in the tourist area, tourism, uh, all, almost reference say that uh, tourist satisfaction is important. It is a goal. But for the village, I think it's not only the tourist satisfaction, but also the community satisfaction. It is important because community, they live every day in its village. It is important uh, for the village. Don't, yeah, okay, you, 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 you think the tourist, in, tourist satisfaction, but you have to think also the community satisfaction. The next slide is about the, we call the market and product. Tourism system is about market and product, right? Or uh, demand supply. You have to understand what the threat is, what the opportunity is, and what the uh, strength and weaknesses. The competitors, you have to know that. And the understand visitor behavior. Sometimes we don't understand. We also, also uh, attract people. So welcome to my uh, village. But we don't know what the behavior of the tourists is. If, uh, if the behavior of the tourists is not best, the culture of the community, it will be a problem. There are so many uh, examples for this. The irritation problem, social irritation problem, and so on. The market also, the opportunity, we have to understand of the new market price I mentioned before, but no people like to uh, visit to uh, village or remote areas because they, seem, they feel uh, so give more better health, wellness, and so on. And the second one, it's important that going to village is not just for a pleasure, but also for having knowledge and experience, different culture, different nature, and so on. The strength is nature culture, of course, and local wisdom, I put it one. Local wisdom is important. Uh, the weaknesses is, uh, you know, greedy. Usually if tourists come, one dozen, two dozen, and three dozen, and people become greedy to have more and more and more. And like, uh, you know, uh, people going to the sea and drink water, sea water, and always, you know, thirsty and so on. The coordination, the human resources. People do as a good one for this, the human resources. Product development and market segment. Uh, you have to know which market you have to uh, take to attract to the village and what product development. Pariki mentioned this, this is, uh, is a good one for market and uh, sorry, this one. Uh, now we are talking about the tourism paradigm. Uh, 
some reference like uh, you know Maslow and Mil Milton say that uh, people is going step ahead to uh, from physic, uh, psychology, and uh, intellectual needs. In the tourism, I mentioned that there's a like a people going uh, somewhere from a pleasure-based tourism just for happy and so on, going to service-based tourism for hospitality. And nowadays, uh, many uh, of them is moving to have a knowledge-based tourism. People uh, going uh, visit uh, somewhere a destination, whatever is is going not only for pleasure and giving having more a good hospitality service, but also uh, having more experience. So maybe maybe people they can buy uh, they can stay in the five star hotel, but they like to stay to Hampstead because Hampstead give more experience to the uh, uh, tourists. The second one is the sustainable tourism. Uh, this one is I put some uh, package of some product some product is related with uh, knowledge, creative uh, edu edu tourism, eco tourism, archaeo tourism. I think is important also. Now uh, we are going to the what we call the sustainable tourism with respect to the local wisdom. We understand more. I I don't I want to clarify it a lot. Uh, we have uh, three uh, mentioned is the social, economy, and uh, physical environment. There are two things that we always talk about the uh, sustainable tourism. But we forget the other thing is uh, the important thing for the uh, village uh, tourism is the ethics in the middle of uh, you know the <laughs> circles. We have a lot of you know understand uh, a lot of uh, local wisdom in Indonesia. The the importance of local wisdom is very related with uh, the, what we think about the sustainable tourism. Because the local wisdom, like you have understand, Trihita Karana, they are not talking about the relation between human and uh, nature, uh, human economy, human social, but they are talking about the, the relation uh, of uh, human and the God. It is important because it's some uh, moral obligation here. Yeah? For the people to, you know, you still have uh, the God to, you know, to watch what you do in the world. <laughs> That's important. Uh, GIZ, uh, together with Panorama, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, published for the culture of Pulu Langkah, mengembangkan 10 step to uh, develop the green uh, village tourism. There are five step, uh, 10 steps. Uh, everybody can use it. Uh, the steps and maybe the Buntu is uh, not starting from uh, step one, but maybe we are starting from uh, the maybe it's already uh, in the step 10. But I just uh, remind the Buntu that the evaluation is not only just numbers, what mentioned, but also uh, the benefit uh, gets by people. How people can happy with the tourism in this village. Uh, thank you, Buhera. Uh, it is a, <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I speak very fast because of time, you know. Uh, but thank you very much for your attention, all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Fahenki, for the uh, insightful presentation. And now um, uh, we go to Amrina. Okay, so Amrina, the student who's participating in the Chipunta Tourism Village. Please, the time is yours, Amrina. Uh, so good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, we have asked I will share a uh, picture of uh, my program, Chibutu. Maybe. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah please, Amrina. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Amrina Mushada. If you can call me Amrina, I'm a tourism student in Grace School of Tourism, Jakarta. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the role of student uh, in building a sustainable Hindu tourism village is compromised by providing education uh, to the community, such as how to serve the police, how to maintain the tourism, for example, and how to develop the tourism potential and conduct the training that can uh, improve the skills to obtain sustainable uh, benefits in income uh, of economic, social, and cultural, uh, such as uh, training in the product, like food and accessories, and uh, the last is providing monitoring and evaluation, of course, uh, so this activity is uh, into the system. Uh, so, for me as a student, what she would do is to continue to innovate in terms of product and tourism. Action. So, the sustainable tourism can be implemented. For example, like a program I implemented in the Tourism Village, that is student organization uh, organization capacity building program or the PKO or NAWA. Uh, the program is uh, to build the capacity of a student organization through a series of courses of fostering student organization by universities, which are implemented in commanded by the Ministry of uh, Research and Technology for increasing our productivity of tourist tourism through optimization of uh, eco tourism. So uh, this is uh, the picture of the program that I implemented in achieving uh, tourism village. Like tourism village, the Chikungu tourism village uh, actually has a lot of uh, tourism potential, one of which is the, the ship village. But unfortunately, the ship village is still very uh, conventional uh, and cage is very traditional and cannot be used uh, as a tourist attraction because of that. Uh, my team and I see the ship village has a great potential. It, uh, it is uh, developed into a tourist attraction. So we repair the cage, make a tourism support facilities such as uh, installing the lights, installing garden lights, the chair, sink, and I hope that the implementation of uh, this program will help uh, develop uh, ship village and ship into tourism. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Amrina, um, for the uh, sharing. So one of the activity was actually um, developing the uh, uh, like um, uh, I think like something to from the 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 ship right from the ship vessels for fertilizer. Yeah, okay, which is very interesting. Um, okay, uh, next uh, I think um, we have all the speakers here. Thank you very much for the presentation. And then we have learned about uh, some critical points in developing the tourism village. And we can see that how important it is to have the community engagement, participation and empowerment, uh, protection to the natural and cultural resources, um, respecting the traditional value, uh, responsible tourism, authentic experiences, participative learning, also collaborative uh, and networking. And, and also um, in Indonesia, we have the, like the, the value of Trihita Karana, which is the harmonious relationship between uh, with the God people and also the nature. All right, um, so um, Ms. Kazim, uh, Prof. Kazim, after this, then we just go straight before, uh, or we, we show the video, or we just go straight with the question and answer. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hera. Uh, it was a real showcase of social capital, the collaboration between public and private sector. Uh, we learned a lot how uh, Indonesia um, facilitate and develop uh, uh, rural areas through tourism. And uh, we had several uh, beautiful case studies that are very informative. 
Um, I think uh, due to the time constraint, if you uh, let us, we will show the video at the end of the webinar. And meanwhile, I would like to invite um, our uh, uh, Scott team, uh, Professor Jafar and Professor Cooper, yourself and all the panelists uh, for a discussion right now. So um, I would like to uh, ask you and Professor Jafar first, uh, if you have questions for the speakers, uh, I, I have some on my own and I'll, I'll try to um, uh, wrap it up in small questions at the end. Uh, so uh, you can start uh, Dr. Hera first, if you have questions uh, to the speakers and I'll uh, invite Professor Jafari also to panel right after you. Okay, thank you, Prof. Kazim. I think we have, actually, we have two speakers here from the uh, audience. Um, recently, I just have a uh, question from Mr. Himawan Brahmantyo. Um, he asked, how do you prepare for leadership regeneration so the leadership style could still maintain the sustainability of Jibuntu Tourism Village? And then another one uh, that I received was actually the question, um, uh, about uh, the critical factors in developing the tourism village and also the uh, the criteria, the important criteria um, to develop a tourism village. Those are the questions from the audience that I receive. Uh, maybe anyone wants to answer the question? Jadi pertanyaan pertama, faktor apa yang penting ya untuk me, apa, uh, membuat, uh, untuk membangun ya, membangun desa wisata? Ya, faktor dan atau kriteria apa yang sangat penting untuk bisa membangun desa wisata ya. dan juga yang kedua adalah leadership ya leadership untuk uh, sustainability ya dari uh, Cibuntu Tourism Village. Oh pa pagi, pagi, do you want to question, uh, answer yes. the question? Yeah. yeah, please. Yes, thank you, thank you, Menehmera. So allow me to maybe to give my um, opinion about uh, the question. First thing first is about the character. Because uh, mostly the program fail because only involves the uh, education institution only give a uh, training and training, okay? But after the training, after they can fulfill uh, the competency, so what next? They have to be survived. They have to be promoted by themselves. That's why first we have to put the fundamental in the character, the willingness yeah, to share. Because according also our experience, uh, Madam Hera, okay, uh, some of our affiliates, you know, the program is stopped because after, you know, the money comes, <laughs> they calling each other about the share. That's why first come first is the character. And second, about the politics. Frankly speaking, also this is the case, when the head of village change, also the policy change. But the, you know, the, first, uh, the worst thing, when they are compete to become the head of village after one win and one lose, so, the, the, this loose person was a uh, initiator, yeah? When the past, you know, head of village, you know, like a chief of Bok Darwis or maybe the committee uh, tourism uh, village because the, uh, he, he was a rival of this new head village. So uh, he will be, you know, what we call exile or maybe yeah, abandoned from the system. So that's the second, yeah. And the third also about the regeneration, Madam Hera. Yeah, okay. For this current is very advanced about the system, but sometimes they, they forget about how to sustainable, how to take the young people go inside to the system. So I think that's my, uh, share of uh, opinion. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Agi, for the answer. So maybe from Prof. Jafar or Prof. Kazem now? Or... Um, thank you very much. Um, 
one specific question that came to my mind throughout the presentation is how you prioritize the development need in rural. And because um, rural development through tourism is the main, uh, as I uh, understood, is not tourism itself. So it is uh, the development need. So um, I saw several case studies. And of course, in each uh, area, we have different priorities. So uh, what is the process? and um, how are these priorities going to be determined? I um, I rely on you, Dr. Hera, to uh, to see uh, who is going to answer this question. Okay, so you, you, the question is that the priority, right? Yes. Okay. Mungkin ada yang bisa menjawab dari sini, Bapak Ibu. Mungkin mungkin dari Bapak Parito atau Pak Hengki. Jadi Prof Kaiser menanyakan mengenai prioritas ya, priority untuk pengembangan desa wisata. Jadi apa apa prioritasnya apa gitu? Ya mungkin sedikit menambahkan Bu Era. Ya. Desa wisata ini kan bertumpu pada bagaimana kita memberdayakan masyarakat. Sehingga hmm. prioritasnya adalah bagaimana membentuk mental dan karakter masyarakat itu sendiri hmm. agar bisa dapat mempersiapkan segala kreativitasnya sehingga bisa menjadi tuan rumah yang baik. Jadi itu yang menjadi prioritas adalah bagaimana kita membangun sumber daya manusia serta uh, kelembagaan di, unit, uh, di organisasi unit desa itu sendiri. Sehingga semuanya bisa bahu-membahu untuk bisa uh, mengakselerasi kebijakan kepala desa serta pemerintah uh, itu sendiri. Hmm, Oke, okay. ya, terima kasih Pak Rito. So, uh, Prof. Kaisem, uh, Pak Rito from the uh, Kuningan uh, Regency Government, uh, Uh, according to to him, it is the the priority actually is the uh, characteristic development and uh, the mentality characteristic development of the community, um, because without the community support, it is uh, very hard for the uh, the tourism uh, the tourism village leader to manage and to um, uh, develop the the village. So that's why he said the community first. You have to develop the community. Um, uh, you have to uh, uh, develop the characteristic of the community, so everyone will support will support the uh, the program from the head of the village and also the uh, program from the local government. Thank you very much, Dr. Hera. I uh, pass it on to Professor Jafari. Thank you, Prof. Kazim. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh for this wonderful uh, webinar. Uh, here are you already summarized the highlights of the, <clears throat> of the, of the speakers. And uh, I want to simply say, I, I learned a lot <clears throat> from the, the process of development of tourism village in, uh, uh, in Indonesia. Uh, and I congratulate you for, for your achievements. Uh, I have a question which I don't know if I want to ask it or not because I'm afraid it may be misunderstood. It has all the good intentions and it's, it's meant to be academic. We are talking about uh, uh, the country called Indonesia with 270 million population. Did I? 86% Muslim. And then I heard that there was the situation of alcoholism. I wonder how how did this happen? Was that alcoholism among the tourists, among the residents, among the tourism employees, and how was it resolved? I don't know who raised the question of alcoholism. It was in one of the presentations. Professor Jafar, okay. your, your video is, is off, your camera. I'm, I'm sorry, oh. but you have my voice, right? Yes, yes, your yeah. voice is. Yeah. So about the alcoholism, uh, Prof. Jafar? Well, that was my question. I don't know who, uh, which, which of the presentations mentioned that. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe... Uh, Anyone want to answer here? Jadi mengenai uh, ini Bapak Ibu mengenai alkohol ya. Uh, tadi ada presentasi mengenai alkohol. Jadi uh, sebenarnya alkohol ini asal apakah memang 
terjadinya karena dari uh, wisatawan atau turis sendiri atau uh, dari local community yang memang uh, ada di situ kegiatan yang uh, mengandung uh, hal -hal, uh, mengandung alkohol uh, atau bagaimana gitu jadi itu yang ditanyakan oleh Prof Jafar Jafari mungkin ada yang ingin menjawab Bapak Ibu Uh, Bu Hera, boleh? Ya, uh, uh, Mau bahasa ya, Ibu Hera. Uh, hmm. uh, jadi mungkin begini, uh, tadi yang sampaikan oleh Pak Haji Awam itu hmm. uh, dulu pada waktu ada penambangan pasir di desanya itu dulu, hmm. itu sering para tukang atau ini penggali pasir itu sering minum-minum uh, alkohol dan itu sampai mabuk-mabukan. Nah itulah yang mungkin yang hmm. dilarang. Tapi Uh, apa karena itu tadi cukup mengganggu ketentraman desa itu awalnya ya nah setelah uh, kemudian itu dihentikan kemudian ini dicoba diperkenalkan desa wisata nah ini, uh, ini. jadi memang kebetulan memang se hampir seluruhnya kebetulan muslim ya sehingga itu memang uh, mungkin tidak sesuai dengan uh, ini ya apa uh, kepercayaan uh, sebagai seorang muslim untuk minum alkohol tapi tidak uh, bukannya tidak ini ya artinya tapi memang ada minuman-minuman uh, lokal yang kita create yang bisa hmm. untuk uh, wisatawan mungkin itu uh, minta tolong di ini itu aja Bu Hera oh. Oke okay, terima kasih banyak Pak Imawan buat klarifikasinya jadi waktu itu memang ada pekerja yang minum ya Pak minum-minum tapi akhirnya dilarang karena ingin dikembangkan sebagai desa wisata ya Pak ya Oke okay, um, ya yeah, so Prof Jafar uh, because um, maybe you Everyone here uh, heard before, right? That the uh, Cipuntu Tourism Village was developed from um, from an area where it was like an abandoned um, sand, uh, you know, like a sand mining, right? And then at that time, the workers uh, who worked there, um, they they like to drink. They like to drink alcohol. And then when the uh, the village um, is starting to transform into the tourism village, then um, the the head of the village and also the community um, enforce the, the workers to, um, you know, to abandon or to uh, uh, to eliminate the uh, that kind of activities. So they can uh, develop uh, the, the village uh, becoming a, a clean, like a clean tourism village um, according to the uh, traditional, the, re uh, the religious traditional uh, practice. Yeah, so that's that's what happened for Jafar. Yeah, so actually it's coming so, from the workers. So this was external to tourism, it seems. It, it it had nothing to do with tourism, correct? Yes, yes, yeah. I so um, yeah, it has nothing to do with the tour with the tourists, uh, but because they want to transform the village into the tourism village, uh, which is uh, you know uh, following the local and religious uh, custom and tradition, that's why they uh, forbid the the workers. To, uh, to drink alcohols. Well, this this is a wonderful report that you gave because in some countries uh, they claim that tourism promotes alcoholism and the like. And in your mm -hmm. case, it says that alcoholism had nothing to do with tourism. And on the other hand, tourism caused it to go away. Hmm. That's, that's fantastic. That's, that's one of the, this is very important for many countries that claim that tourism could cause that problem. Of course, in some places it does, but it's not necessarily. The, the, the relationship is not there. Uh, I have one, uh, I was impressed with the fact that uh, it was said that uh, tourism is being monitored. And I, 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 can't, I can't remember who talked about monitoring. Uh, is it monitoring the satisfaction of the tourist? Monitoring the satisfaction of the host? or monitoring the satisfaction of the employees, or all the three? Okay. Mungkin Pak Henki, Pak, mau menjawab. We have Pak Henki here from, uh, uh, used to work in the Ministry of Tourism, <laughs> maybe. Pak Henki, you can provide your insights. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm not uh, clear enough what the question is, but I'm trying to uh, answer it. Uh, something like this. Usually, uh, in the mindset of some people, uh, it mentioned that uh, tourist is very important, the tourist satisfaction is very important. A tourist is a king. 
even though they have to, uh, I mean, the product is uh, not uh, match with uh, their daily life. But uh, for them, tourists is important. Uh, do not hate tourists, do not make tourists angry and so on. But for me, I myself think that the satisfaction is not only for tourists, but also for the host community, for the other, what uh, Professor Jafar, Jafar said, mentioned about the employment right there. Uh, actually, it's mentioned in the Global Code of Tourism by UNWTO. But we almost forget for this. We always uh, think about how to make uh, tourists come to our destination. We make better places. Uh, we uh, we destroy land, uh, the sawah uh, for hotels, for restaurants, and also uh, for everything uh, in the for the sake of tourism. But it's not true because uh, you know the the agriculture is uh, based. Uh, main uh, uh, main uh, activity for the uh, villagers, and if, if you destroy the land, the the pertanian, the sawah, you destroy also the culture. You destroy also the future of the people in the village. I think like this. Uh, so I mean that it's not only for tourist satisfaction, but for all satisfaction. Thank you. Well, thank you for your, uh, for your comprehensive response. And this is indeed what I wanted to recommend to communities that they do not monitor uh, satisfaction. And the satisfaction should not be, as you already said, it should not be limited to the tourists. It must include the well-being of the host community. And uh, the one that is not often monitored is the satisfaction of the tourism employees. Tourism employees are the makers and the shakers of tourism. If they are not happy, the host would not be happy, the tourist would not be happy. I wonder how many communities measure satisfaction of employees on annual basis. And I'm, I'm recommending this to be done. It's not that, uh, uh, I don't know if you do it or not, but I think all, this, all the three categories, satisfaction of host guests and tourism, uh, tourism employees should be done every year and compared. Yeah, thank you for reminding us, Professor Javari. I'm Hara. Yeah, sorry, I cannot uh, open my video. Okay, um, uh, maybe I can share about my opinion about the alcohol. Yeah, uh, it depends on about the location and the local wisdom. For example, if we go to the east, part of Indonesia, like in uh, Flores, also in uh, north of Sulawesi, there's the local drinks, traditional drinks, fragmented, not, uh, excuse me, professor, not uh, like uh, modern drinks, like uh, maybe like vodka, at least they're fermented from the herbs. So I think they are like a tolerance policy, uh, as long as just drink for uh, hit our body, not uh, for worse. But it's, the, uh, it's different with uh, some region of Indonesia because Indonesia, maybe you know, uh, we are as a Muslim populated country in the world. So uh, about the alcohol uh, for uh, Muslim is uh, prohibited. So in, for example, directly in uh, Kuningan Regency, so the Muslim is so dominant. So about the alcohol uh, are prohibited if, uh, you know, sell in Kuningan Regency. So therefore about, we have to look about the location uh, uh, related with the local wisdom. Uh, as long as the Muslim uh, dominant or populating, we have to put our respect. Yeah, we cannot drink the, the, the alcohol, but if, in some location, in some village, they produce a bottle like in uh, so, uh, so North Sulawesi in Flores, Flores yeah, is part of uh, Indonesia. They produce the local liquor or local drink. I think as long as still just uh, we drink for our uh, for heating our body, I think is still okay. It's allowance. Uh, it's low. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Um, I think we can, any other question? If uh, not question from the floor, I can uh, pass it on to our rapporteur, Professor Cooper, back to you. Yeah, just a couple of quick comments because we've run over time. This is a fantastic addition to number 38. It builds everything uh, together into the way in which we should actually deal with the questions of small communities. There is a, there is a question in, in chat from Gillang, which um, talks about what do you choose the most when you want to build sustainability in communities, the empowerment of villages with hard skill or trust and commitment. My um, take from today is both. You need synergy, which identifies the resources in the community that looks at um, entrepreneurs and brings them forward. And you need trust and commitment from villagers to provide the framework for it to work. So thank you very much for this um, great webinar. And with all the details, the step-by-step -step approach, responsible local tourism, all very ably uh, summarized by Dr. Hera. So I don't need to do it again. Um, and I just reiterate, I think community and synergy are the critical things. And they will bring forward all of the rest if you can get it going. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Cooper. Okay, Kazim, if I may just add one yes, more please. point uh, uh, on the top of what uh, Malcolm said, uh, and I uh, endorse it. I echo what he said. Fantastic presentation. Uh, I, I, another point I noticed in this presentation, I, uh, in this webinar, and I don't know who said it, it was the population increase due to tourism uh, that moved from less than 1,000 to over 1,000. And this, I know, Dr. Kazim, is the worries in Japan. In other words, the villages are being emptied and tourism cannot help to bring the population back. And I thought that would be re relating to your situation, Dr. Kazem, in Japan. A perfect uh, point, Jafar. I, I was just uh, going to have a similar, I, I don't uh, know, maybe uh, we have some connections. Uh, but, uh, you know, Dr. Hera also uh, has been in Japan. And I was going to ask uh, if we can have a few uh, take out lessons from the experiences that uh, rural tourism in Indonesia can give us also that we can utilize it in Japan. I have many uh, Indonesian students when they come uh, with me to rural area in Japan, they are uh, interested in social capital and natural capital. But as uh, Professor Jafari mentioned, mm -hmm. we have aging society and depopulation in rural. That I know this is not the case in Indonesia. So uh, what lessons can we take uh, from the experiences, uh, maybe even one or two that we just take it back home? Um, Dr. Hera? Yeah, Prof. Kazim, thank you. Uh, well, actually, I was in Japan for, I mean, like already a long time ago, maybe uh, um, it was in 1997 or 98. <laughs> so it's a long time ago. I was still young. <laughs> um, and I worked at the time in the Kuwait Embassy in Tokyo. So uh, I haven't been actually to the rural area in, in Japan. So um, it will be very interesting for me to, if I have a chance to go to Japan and uh, to visit the rural area because I was only in in the city, in the big city uh, in Tokyo. Uh, but um, uh, I think maybe, maybe for the population, there's something that to think of because you mentioned that in Japan, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, aging people or aging community in the rural area. While in Indonesia, we, uh, we have a lot of, uh, uh, young generation, because most of the population in Indonesia actually uh, young young people from the gen uh, from the millennial uh, and then uh, uh, generation Z, so they are actually very productive, and um, uh, and then also they are uh, quite high tech as well, tech savvy, and uh, those uh, people, if we can use actually we can we can encourage the the youth, because in Indonesia we also have. Um, 
what is in uh, the name mungkin Pak Hengki you remember the Genpi ya Pak Genpi Genpi yes, so Genpi so, is like a youth community to promote tourism so this Genpi actually consisting of um, Indonesian youth they are in the and then Gen Z and they're helping they're helping the community the tourism community um, to promote uh, the tourism so they they let's say they posted stories and then they posted photos and they tell stories about this uh look uh, the area about the activities and actually it's quite uh, quite successful and then work very well because um people nowadays they're using social media and then i think uh storytelling is very impactful because when you share stories is i mean like a real you know like it's based on the experience it's real and it's very interesting for uh the people to listen to the stories um, so that's one of the uh, the way that the Indonesian uh, actually Indonesian government Indonesian people uh, make this uh, initiative uh, for the Genpi uh, uh, or the uh, the, the youth community uh, tourism uh, that that actually uh, uh, um, serves as a, like a tourism ambassador. Yeah, they even the one who um let's say if there is the competition of competition international competition they will uh, encourage the uh, indonesian people to vote so they are they quite uh, uh they quite impactful and they they are quite powerful and and i think it's very good uh maybe to have that <laughs> that kind of community <laughs> using the youth <laughs> use their uh you know their uh, spirit and then their positive uh, you know um uh, uh attitude or uh and another thing is also good for the the youth of the uh, the young generation to to appreciate um the nature and also the culture of their own country thank you very much uh, dr hera and thank you jafar for raising this uh, point at the end and that is um kind of a comprehensive conclusion of the rural tourism and development through tourism in rural area i have experienced not only in industrialized or uh, societies like, uh, let's say, developed uh, countries that they have uh, depopulation in rural, but also in many uh, countries uh, that they have young people in rural, uh, they uh, have difficulties to convince the young generation to adopt rural livelihood, uh, farming, for example. Um, the the value of um, agriculture as a lifestyle and uh, many people uh, even though they have uh, um, some opportunities for working in rural they want to go to the capital cities or bigger cities and and continue and in even in japan i have heard from some uh, elder generation that uh, sometimes they they uh, tell their uh, children that if you don't study well you have to stay in the village and, and do farming so it means that um, uh, farming or agriculture as a lifestyle uh, should be reconsidered again as a, the, the culture of agriculture and the value of agriculture as a sector that that brings sustainability, the, the future of, of food security and uh, the rural smallholders that still they are producing about 70% of the world food, uh, even though we have industrialized agriculture and so on. Um, I would like to mention that in January 14, we have a webinar that brings this issue uh, from Japan again. And we are going to share examples of how some rural areas in Japan, they capitalize on their natural resources and they utilize medicinal and edible plants uh, that uh, exist in their uh, uh, locality. Um, and they... Uh, produce tourism uh, activities, experience, and, and of course, uh, food, or um, different type of tourism, health and wellness tourism, and food tourism based on this. And they utilize the traditional knowledge of, uh, of finding processing of uh, this kind of plants uh, in tourism. So um, I would like to invite, uh, invite everybody here to join us on January 14 with medicinal plant uh, tourism and community development based on this. So I would like to thank all of you again uh, for the wonderful panel and this uh, uh, huge contribution. And Dr. Hera, uh, congratulations again for your 
a very uh, unique uh, uh, architecture of this uh, webinar. I, a very special thank to Dr. Jafari that uh, stayed with us until 2 a.m. I think Jafar in your uh, your end. And, it's almost uh, four o'clock. <laughs> it's four. <laughs> okay, sorry. The time passed very, very uh, quick. Uh, thank you all. And uh, I would like to uh, uh, ask everybody to turn on cameras and we have another photo at the end. Um, so let me open. Can I open my, my yes. video? Because... Everybody, please open your videos and let's okay. have... <laughs> Finally. We need your smiles. And then after this, we'll have a video as well. So you can have a look into the uh, video of uh, Chibuntu. Exactly. That's a short video. Okay, so our Scott admin people are going to your, take your uh, photo and we will upload it in our social media. And the video recording of Scott is uh, in Scott video library. So youtube.com slash Scott webinars is available to everybody for free. Um, please uh, uh, feel free to utilize these videos from the beginning, uh, volume one to volume 46 that we already uh, completed and we have uh, about 10 uh, satellite webinars um, in um, in sub channels in the in the video library. Thank you very much um, and uh, we hope to see you again in Scott. We should see you in Indonesia bro. Thank you very much Ibuhera, Prof. Jafari, Prof. Thank Cooper. You. Yeah. I learned a lot from your books, Prof. Jafari and Prof. Cooper. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much. I still Thank keep you. them. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. So we have the video presentation. Ini Desa Cibuntu, Kecamatan Pasawahan, Kompet. Sampurasun, Hujung Sumping di Desa Cibuntu, Kabupaten Kuningan, Jawa Barat. Desa ini berbasis wisata dan terletak di kaki Gunung Ciremai. Alam dan asri menjadi salah satu keunikannya, dihiasi dengan lahan perkebunan yang cukup luas. Beberapa tempat wisata yang terkenal yaitu Curug Dongseng, Wisata Ofur Cibuntu, dan Kampung Dong. Terdapat pula campsite untuk berkegiatan dan mencari makanan khas daerah. Budaya dan sejarahnya juga menjadi daya tarik bagi wisatawan, diantaranya situs Aurip Kidul, situs Pujaldaya, 
situs Birit Daya. Selain itu, terdapat wisata edukasi pembuatan kerajinan tangan gerabah, seperti Pusat Ekraf Cibuntu, yang menyediakan kesempatan bagi wisatawan untuk mencoba membuat gerabah yang tentunya diajarkan sang profesional. Padian merupakan salah satu pengrajin gerabah yang ada di desa ini. Selain mahir dalam membuat gerabah, beliau pun mahir dalam memberikan edukasi mengenai gerabah kepada masyarakat yang ada. Indahnya alam yang mewarnai desa Cibutu, serta keunikan budaya yang menjadikan desa ini sangat wajib untuk dikunjungi. Indahnya alam berpadu budaya. Inilah desa Cibutu. Salam Mako. Thank you. Thank you. And good night. Okay. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night Thank and you. good morning to you, Jafar. Bye bye. Yeah, good morning, Prof. Jafar. <laughs> okay. Thank you, all the speakers, panelists, Pak Awan. Thank you, Guerra. Thank you, all of you. Prof. Mako, Pak Hendi, Pak Agi, Pak Jojo, Pak Abel, Pak Brina. Terima kasih, Bu Guerra. Pak Agi. Terima kasih banyak buat bantuan dan partisipasinya, Bapak Ibu semuanya, Mbak Dewi juga, 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 Mbak Dewi